Welcome to Film Riot Mondays. We haven't done this in a really long time. Josh doesn't even know we're about to do it. But Josh, you have to make me laugh. On three. One, two, okay. three, go. Booty fart. <laughs> You're 12. Yeah. First question, when do you decide how you are going to light your scene? Do you pre-light or do you walk into a room and turn on one light and start from there? For me personally, I walk into a room, turn on one light and start from there. When we're doing bigger projects and I have a cinematographer, they're a big part of thinking about how that's gonna work out. So for me, it's more about the story. How does the story, how does this need to look to convey the feeling that I'm trying to to my audience? Get a lot of reference boards and I share that with my cinematographer um, to kind of get on the same page of what this thing needs to look like. And they have a lot of input to help guide the ship that way so it's a matter of you knowing how this needs to feel and then having conversations to figure out what look is going to be perfect to push that feeling toward your audience. How do you go about directing for the first time? Any do's slash don'ts on everything from pre to post production? Honestly, if you're a first time director, I don't think you should tackle some big short film. I think you should do something very, very small, like Film Riot sketch level type stuff. That's what's been so great about Film Riot sketches is over the years, we just do sketch after sketch, week after week, constantly doing new things, not spend a ton of time on it, but really just trying different ideas. And over time, that has informed me a lot on what works and what doesn't, even when we do something really quickly and it only takes an, just a day to write, shoot, finish it, uh, I still learn from that because I had to problem solve or something didn't work or something did work and now that's in my toolbox that I can pull out. So when you're on set and something does go wrong, you can quickly come up with a creative solution to move past that issue and that I think is definitely a big part of being a director. Also, if you want to be a director, I think you need to know a little bit about every one of the key positions. So you should know a little bit about cinematography. You definitely need to know about lenses, in my opinion, uh, or at least have a good idea about them. And um, above all else, I think it's incredibly important to be in front of the lens at some point. Act in something so you know what that feels like to be in that position so you can uh, be there for your actors in the way that they need you to because you understand what they're going through. I've seen a lot of directors treat their actors like cattle and not really empathize with what's going on with their people in front of the lens. So I think that's incredibly important, but I think it's a collection of all those things that will ultimately make you a good director. So just start doing things, start small and work your way to something bigger. So when you get there, you're confident and uh, you can get the job done. When are we gonna find out about the crazy light blimp thing that you were using in your horror shorts? We're gonna be talking about that in October with the two projects that we shot. We're gonna be releasing them probably second weekish of October on. We'll solidify that and let you guys know as soon as we can, probably put out a promo pretty soon for you to feast your eyes upon. But it's gonna be a great month. We're very excited. We have giveaways, we have those projects, we have behind the scenes stuff. It is going to be, it's gonna be good, you guys could be good. Have you watched Stranger Things yet? If so, what do you think of it? I have, and I love it. I'm about to watch it a second time all the way through. It's one of my favorite things to have come out this year, for sure. That and Night Of. Night Of was amazing. But I'm also obsessed with the score for Stranger Things and I've been listening to it on loop on the iTunes. Any more sound effects packs coming in the near future? Yes, we have one coming this year and we have a couple of ideas for next year as well. Uh, we like to do them with Rob Crackle because we know he's gonna deliver quality. He's unbelievably amazing. So it's a matter of us coming up with ideas and then syncing up our schedule to make sure we can produce something that's really quality for you guys. So definitely uh, one this year and uh, we have a couple ideas for next year as well. Last question, music has been on my mind lately and I recently watched a video about music or lack of memory music in Marvel films and how composers hate when filmmakers use temp tracks because it gets stuck in their minds and makes it difficult to be unheard. What's your feelings on temp tracks and do you have a composer create for your shorts or just use free play music? Thanks. I've heard people talk about that before and I think there is something to be said for temp music being a hindrance but also a lot to be said about temp music being very helpful especially when on a deadline it helps get the communication done. It's the same thing as having a reference board for a cinematographer. I put together a reference board for my cinematographer but I'm not telling him that the movie should look exactly like this that's just silly we're making our own film 
but what this reference board is doing is showing my cinematographer how I want the image to make you feel as an audience member so we can get on the same page of what we're trying to do with this film. And the temp score is doing exactly that. I don't want my composer to follow it line by line and make it sound identically like this temp score I put together. In fact, when I use a temp score, it's usually like six different soundtracks across a four minute short film or five minute short film. So it's not even consistent. It's all over the place. But what you're getting are moments that are showing my composer the emotion in that moment. What I think we need emotionally, what I want us to feel as an audience member, pacing, and when I think the music should go out and come back in. And sometimes I'm totally wrong. And my composer, Daniel James, will drop music out where I didn't expect, and he was dead right, and it was perfect. But basically the temp score is, listen to this one time so we can get on the same page of what I think this should be doing emotionally, then throw it out, wash it out of your mind, and now let's do something original. And then after I've shown my composer that temp score, I never listen to it again. And once I get his score, I listen to it about five times, take a day, listen to it a few more times so I can wash that temp score out of my mind. So that's something I think is very important too. If you're using a temp score, you have to be uh, aware of the fact that there is such a thing as temp love and you can get locked into that idea of what the temp score is doing. So you have to kind of bleach your brain because you can't use that music and you want to do something that's unique to your film. So there is that portion of it as well. And if you're not doing that, if you are falling into temp love, yes, I agree. It can be dangerous and it can be a problem. Is it the problem that these videos are trying to put forward? No, I don't think it is. And across time, the percentage of iconic music within films is very low. The amount of uh, scores that we have compared to iconic scores is massive. And this goes back to way before temp scores even existed. So temp is good for some people, not for others. I use it and I disagree with uh, all the demonizing of it. If you're someone who struggles with tax stuff, listen up. Our friends at FreshBooks have created ridiculously simple cloud accounting software that helps service-based small business owners get a handle on their paperwork. FreshBooks keeps all your cash flow in one place so you know exactly what invoices you sent, who has paid you what, and what your income is. Their mobile app lets you take pictures of your receipts and organize them for later, which makes claiming expenses at tax time a breeze. You'll be so much more prepared and way less stressed, and right now FreshBooks is offering a free 30-day trial. Just go to freshbooks.com forward slash film right and enter film right in the how did you hear about us section. Logo. So that's it for today, which means it's time for my suggestion of the week. This one is a blog post from Film Supply that's talking about using sound design in your production to raise that value. You can find that right here. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.